Hello everybody, this is Mine Kralix here, and today I'm making a video on my Raspberry Pi 3 build. So I basically built a portable Raspberry Pi 3, and um, it is already constructed. I did not make a video of how um, I made it, however I will show the components and you will get a general idea of how to make it yourself if you do. So it comes out of this box like this, which, uh, on which it says 3.5 inches Raspberry. This is the case in which um, this LCD touchscreen came in um, when I ordered it on the mail. So the case, as you, some of you can recognize, is a 3D printed case. And um, the reason is, is because I did not want to spend money on, um, on a purchased case. However, you can purchase cases off of... Uh, Amazon or eBay or whatever site of your choice. Uh, luckily my high school had a 3D printer open to the public so I was able to use it to print this amazing case. It has um, cutouts for all the ports uh, so here's the Ethernet port um, although I don't know why someone would need an Ethernet port I mean Raspberry Pi uh, 3 has um, Wi-Fi. Uh, four USB ports of course. Uh, here's some vents in case um, in case the processor gets hot. However, I'm not worried that it will get hot because this is not an overclocked model. However, if your um, th a Raspberry Pi 3 is overclocked, it may heat up to as much as 100 Celsius, which is the boiling point of water, in which case you will have to turn it off because uh, the plastic might melt or uh, it might get damaged. So here's the power port, a mini USB port, but it can be used for data transfer only for power. Um, HDMI port, audio port, um, of course the Ethernet already went over that. Uh, so it's not exactly a very sturdy build. This part for some reason always comes off. It, it doesn't really work well with the screen. I guess the the person who made this case did not really think about the tolerances or I guess I just have a different model of the LCD screen and also by the way I will have all the links where to buy the LCD screen the the Raspberry Pi itself and the components in here as well down in the description so if you do want to purchase some of these parts I will have links ready for you um, some of you have may have noticed that there's this little um, cutout here well you can like use your um, fingernail or um, to like open it up a bit um, so I don't know if you can see or not but there's an SD card in there and I take like a little pincher open this up and I can take um, the SD card out and put a new one in if I want to without actually taking the pie out of the case which is a very um, big advantage over other cases because it, it's kind of a pain to take the pie in and out of the case because it it has very low tolerances which is both a pro and con because the Raspberry Pi it it doesn't have much uh, freedom of movement within the case which is good but the downside is that it's fairly difficult to get it in and out but for the purpose of this video I will remove the Raspberry Pi out of the case the first step is to take out the LCD screen which connects the GPIO pins so, I'm having a bit difficulty taking off, but, hold on. oh yes, there we go. So, as you can see, let me wait for the camera to focus. It says 3.5 inch RPi LCD, um, 480 times 320 pixels. Uh, it's a touch screen, which has, um, it also has a stylus included in it. And by the way, let me show you the stylus. It's actually inside this, um, baggie right here. Now I'll get to this baggie later which is this actually bag is actually a battery to power the Raspberry Pi on the go which is probably a question some of you had. So here's actually the stylus included within the um, 3.5 inch LCD screen. It connects the GPIO ports as you can see right here. Um, so basically right here, I don't know, the lighting is not that good but basically right here are the GPIO pins and it connects like right here as so that it slides onto the GPIO pins I won't put it back on right now because I just took it off uh, so this is the Raspberry Pi 3 itself and um oh actually yes I am going to put it on right now because I'm going to boot it right now um, now this might not be seen on camera because I, I'm looking at the construction itself instead of on the camera so it slides fairly well on here and the best part is is that you don't need to do any um, coding or uh, configging within the Raspberry Pi because the manufacturer of the screen provides um, a download of um, of a custom 
Raspbian image so you don't have to config it if you if you're using Raspbian if you're using another OS then you will ha actually have to config the screen as it as so the display would show up on the screen but the manufacturer has basically a download link which I will put in the description as well so you can download the software and just um, write it onto the SD card and not have to worry about sitting there for uh, for several hours and trying to make the display go onto the screen it's it's fairly easy user friendly so this is what I'm this is um this is my power supply for the Raspberry Pi um, as you can probably see let me wait for until it focuses it you, you can't really see it well but it basically says um, input DC 5 volt 2.0 a output um, DC 5 volt 2.1 amps which is great because the Raspberry Pi actually the recommended amperage is I think it's 2.5 amps but 2.1 amps will do just as fine um, so basically this is actually this actually has two USB outputs and it is actually meant to charge phones however I use it to power the Raspberry Pi I don't know if you can see it well, it's kind of difficult to see, but this is basically the two USB ports. Oh, here, there we go. So this is output one and output two, and the middle mini USB is actually where you charge the power bank itself. It has a very great, right here, it has a button, and when you press it, it actually turns it on and shows the charge. So right now I have two bars out of four, which is awesome because I haven't used the my Pi in a while. Um, this is the cord included with the... Um, um, power bank to charge it however I use it both to charge it and to power the Raspberry Pi now make sure to plug it into output 1 because otherwise output 2 won't work it has a lower amperage um, so let me just plug it in here it's a bit difficult to do this on camera to make sure all of this is seen uh, so there we go I'm just gonna yes there we go it's in there and I think that my operating system crashed recently so I might have to cut filming um, if it did crash because let's see if it actually works so let me see I turned on the power and for some reason there's no image which is weird oh there we go it's it's actually shining maybe I did not put it well enough on well that really sucks so um I guess I'll have to cut filming and resolve this issue. I might probably have to reinstall the OS for it to work. So, um, see you in a while. Hello and welcome back. It has been about 24 hours since I've last filmed. I have now formatted the mini SD card and um, put on a fresh OS. And this is how it looks like. This tiny, tiny mini SD card. Wait for it to focus. Uh... Yes, there we go. SanDisk Extreme Plus 32 gigabytes micro SD uh, U3. So this actually supports 4K video. Um, it's a very very fast SD card and it's great to use in Raspberry Pis for optimal file transfer speed and boot speed. So unfortunately, while trying to insert the SD card inside the Raspberry Pi module, it fell into the case um, and started just rolling around there. So I actually had to take out this whole casing out. So this is how the construction looks without a case, just so you can get an idea of it. Um, let me wait for it to focus. Here's it connected through the GPIO pins. Of course, I'm going to take this off, then put the Raspberry Pi back into the um, case, then uh, put the screen back on on top. So on the bottom here, we can see the mini SD card slot, the Broadcom processor, uh, this chip right here, the, the shiny one, uh, don't touch that because that's actually Wi-Fi. Um, Bluetooth is on here also somewhere, I don't know. You could, um, I don't know if you could see it, but it, it says 3, oh yeah, there you go, 3.5 inch RPI um, LCD. And so I'll cut filming once more to put it in because it, it takes quite a bit and I don't want to bore you guys out. Okay, so now the Raspberry Pi is inside the case, and I inserted the S Mini SD card into the correct slot, and we should be ready to roll. Now, let me just provide power to my Pi using this Power Rocks um, portable battery pack. Like I said before, make sure to use um, output one because output two doesn't have the proper um, amperage. Uh, so, because um, output 
2 is 2.4 amps and the recommended is 2.5 amps but 2.4 amps will do just fine however output 1 is only 2.1 amps which is much worse than 2.4 amps so make sure to use output um, make sure to always use output 2 then output 1 so I, I just almost accidentally put output one. I just haven't used the pi in a while. So just, yes, now this is definitely, just try to use output two and not output one to power your Raspberry Pi because the amperage is um, closer to the recommended one. Um, so let me just plug it in and we should be ready to roll. Okay, so now this is my first boot with this new fresh OS, so please bear with me here. Pressing the power button, and we should see code going through the screen just in a while now. So, oh, it's already going. Let's see, loading the drivers. The boot should be pretty fast because I have a very fast SD card. And there we go. A few seconds and already on to the boot screen. So now I'll use my stylus to um, to use the Raspberry Pi. And as you can see here, there's no external cables or anything. It's completely, well, wireless except for this wire, of course, here. I could have, of course, soldered a battery pack onto the bottom here, but I just thought it would be much easier to use a, um, a phone charger battery pack just because it has much larger capacities and is less hassle. It's also easier to check them out. Just I just need to press it and I can see that there's two bars out of four which means that 50% of the battery pack is still charged and it lasts for a bit like five hours or something to power the Raspberry Pi which is completely great. So this is how the OS looks like. Of course this is Raspbian. However it is a bit changed to fit the needs of the screen. For example you can see right here there's actually a matchbox keyboard. This is because there is no keyboard connected to the Pi and so the only way to type is to actually use kind of a matchbox keyboard. It's very difficult to press as you can see as the buttons are very very small and um, but it's great to have one and um, for some reason this thing's oh yeah there we go um, there's however there's also if you go into um, accessories here there's actually a second uh, keyboard and it's called already a keyboard not a matchbox keyboard now let's see I'm not sure if it, why it did not come out I'll just try to open it up again it is a bit glitchy but oh yeah so there we go this is a much bigger variant of the matchbox keyboard however it does not contain um numbers such as uh, 1 through through 0 and um, it also doesn't contain some symbols and it also oh yeah it does contain a space bar though uh, so anyway this is kind of not a really good option to use a Pi in this way because the GPIO pin um, LCD screen it actually takes up a lot of the um, processing power of the Raspberry Pi processor because um, let me just open task manager real quick um, there we go. So, I don't know, oh yes, it's, yeah, the task manager opens for a very long time. I'm not even sure why it's not opening. It's, it's weird. It looks like I have to open things twice for them to actually show up. So yes, there we go. So, task manager's on. So yes, it just, I'm not using any programs are open. As you can see, there's no tabs open. Uh, and I already have 26% CPU usage and 69 megs, which is, um, it's not that bad, but... Mm. It still it still slows down as you can see the tabs they kind of open slowly and and oh yeah there we go we have a wireless here of course and I just accidentally did that I, I'm gonna connect to the wireless network to my home wireless network and also it seems that the screen is a bit off so what I can do is I can actually go into accessories I think let me go down a bit um, and that is um, I can't really see well the screen's small and I'm looking through the camera I think it's might be programming let me see just to make sure uh, no maybe office internet games accessories LX archiver so let me see that toggle matchbox yes there should be there should be actually kind of a screen calibrator calibrate screen I can't seem to actually find it which is weird I guess this version of the OS that I got oh I didn't mean to open you scratch that was a completely yes close dialogue don't save 
So let me see, there's supposed to be screen calibrator. I don't know why it's not here. Which is very, very weird. It should be here, and it was here the last time I looked. So yes, that is definitely weird. So basically, oh yeah, there we go. Calibrate touch screen. It's under the preferences. So when I press that, calibrate touch screen. I don't know if it ran or not. I probably pressed it. Oh, I accidentally pressed Epiphany browser. So let me just close Epiphany real quick. Um, so let me just go down to preferences once more. Calibrate touch screen. As you can see, you basically have to press right into the center and it will calibrate your touch screen. And there we go, it's calibrating the touch screen. So wait for it to calibrate up. And it looks like it has made the calibration permanent. And it also goes through the Linux terminal. Just make sure to close that. And now every time we press it, as you can see, it, it kind of goes, it's now more precise. It now actually scrolls the cursor where I'm pressing, uh, which is great. And But one downside of this um, desktop is that it's very difficult to do anything because the screen's small, however the tabs are all still big. For example, all the tabs that are open go in here, which is kind of difficult to open them. Uh, so... Um, also, you can connect to public Wi-Fi using this. To connect to public Wi-Fi, just uh, go into this Wi-Fi section right here, connect to the unprotected network. However, all these networks are protected because these are my home networks. Um, well, at least only one. These are just my um, the other tenants' um, networks. Um, so uh, if you want to connect to like uh, public Wi-Fi, if you're at a McDonald's or something, um, you connect right here, um, you just press on it, wait for it to connect, then you open Epiphany Browser, and then in a few, um, in a while, you just try to go to Google and stuff, and then in a while, it will open up a page where you have to agree to the agreement, and it says, oh yes, uh, you agree to hold McDonald's harmless, and uh, blah blah blah, a bunch of other legal crap, and then you press agree to that, and then you can access... Um, public internet through this pie, which is very, very great. Now my camera is almost about to die, so I guess I'll wrap up the video. It, it's been a pretty long video. I hope you enjoyed the video. This was Minecralix, and I will do more videos, definitely. Um, so this is Minecralix, and um, please subscribe, rate, and comment. I hope you like the video. I'll make more videos if you want on my Raspberry Pi. If you have any questions, just please put them down in the comments section below. And if you want me to make a video on any certain subject, please make sure to uh, comment, yeah, rate, subscribe. This was Ryan Kralix, and I'm out.